Okay, we're looking at the Marvo Scorpion KM409 gaming combo, which is basically a keyboard and a mouse. And I'm pretty sure I've seen that keyboard before. It looks like the K616A, if I'm correct. And if that is the case, that keyboard on its own retails at £15. I've not come across that mouse, but this whole pack is £17.99, or at least that's a suggested price. So in basics, you're getting a £15 keyboard and then a mouse for an extra £3 included. So that sounds pretty good to me because these mice are usually, something along that lines is probably going to be at least usually around about £10. So you're getting good value there. So basics is, is it's anti-ghosting, you've got multicolour backgrounds, and you've got 2400 DPI optical sensor, obviously that's on the mouse. Uh, the keyboard is rainbow coloured, so if I remember right, there's basically three colours uh, on here. You can change them to a preset design, but you have to have a preset or the lights off, or you can change the brightness. You can't choose specifically which colours you want, you can't have the whole keyboard one colour. The mouse I've not come across yet, but according to this, you've got seven colours. I'm guessing. This is just going to rotate the colours around and so forth, but we'll find out in a few minutes. Let's have a quick look at the box. Uh, on this side you've not got much, it's just the model number. On the other side, it says Ergo Design, Backlit Keyboard, Advanced Anti-Ghosting, No Driver, so that hopefully means no software to download, 2400 DPI optical sensor, that'll be on the mouse. And you've got DPI steps, so I'm guessing that's the switch on the top, which allows you to change the DPI of the mouse, which basically determines how sensitive it is. On the back of the box, it tells you about the streamless gaming. You've got your rainbow effect on the keyboard, like I said, and then you've got your optical precision. It shows you a picture again and tells you all the specifications of each item there. Okay, inside the box, you've got three items, the keyboard, the mouse, and the manual. The manual doesn't actually tell you how to use anything, really. It just basically says plug it in and away you go. It doesn't tell you how to change the brightness or anything like that of the LED backlights, how to change the DPI. There's no instructions at all. Even though I've reviewed this, I know what it is. You press this button to change the lights, um, and then you function and page up and down to change the brightness. So it's pretty straightforward, and your hot buttons are the function and the F keys, depending on what you want to do. Uh, the mouse, I'm guessing you change the DPI by pressing the button on the top. Here we have the keyboard and mouse both plugged in. The cabling on both seems to be around about one and a half meters long, so it should give you plenty of room. The cabling is just like a, a rubberized finish on there. LED lighting comes on as soon as you turn it on on the keyboard to change the lights. If I'm right from other keyboards I've seen, you just press this brightness key and you can see it changes between three different modes or off. Press it again, comes back on. If you want to change the brightness, hold the function down and page up or down. It's a shame that none of this is actually mentioned in the manual, um, so a lot of people will have to guess how it works, but it shouldn't be too difficult, I hope. One thing I didn't mention on the other keyboard, what we reviewed, the K616A, which this looks identical to, other than the cable on that has got sort of a rough finish where that's a smooth, um, was the WSA and D is written on the arrow keys, and then you've got WSA and D over here with arrows on them as well. So, again... Obviously I understand W, S, A and D are used for up, down, left and right, but why would you put it on the arrow keys? It seems a little bit strange, it's self-explanatory there, up and down, and if you press that key, it doesn't print W out, so why put it on there? It seems a little strange to me, because some you know, a lot of games will see these keys completely different to these keys, so you'd use these for moving around. These keys could be doing for something completely different. Let's have a look at the bottom of the keyboard. On the bottom you have got two rubberized feet at the front, there's none at the back. You do have the stands to tilt it if you wished, which has got no rubber on them either. So what basically that means is when you've got it on the table, if you knock the front of the keyboard, like there, it won't budge. But if you knock the back, it slides easily. So 
ideally that should, should have some rubberized feet on the back. Let's have a quick look at the mouse itself. So the mouse, I can't see any way of changing the colours on here, again there's no instructions, but it looks to me like those seven colours the mouse does, it basically changes on its own. It looks pretty nice to be honest, there's a nice effect on there, It's uh, uh, it does look sort of like a, a beehive effect is probably the best, best way of putting it. This is your DPI switch, so you press that, change your DPI, you've got a wheel which is a button, you've got a left button, right button, and you've also got two more buttons on this side which you can use as backwards and forwards. The mouse does actually feel very light, probably a bit too plasticky or hard to say but it feels a lot cheaper quality than the actual keyboard. Okay for those of you who like decibels and weights the mouse weighs in at 95 grams so that's actually heavier than it feels to be honest it feels a lot lighter than that it's probably just the build quality or something but it just does feel cheaper and more plasticky is probably the best way to do it. I know they're pretty much all plastic anyway, but it doesn't seem to have that that feel about it. I don't know what it is for me, but uh, just doesn't just doesn't feel as well built or ha as high quality as the keyboard. But again, 95 grams, that's not too bad. Obviously, everyone prefers different. The clickiness on the mouse itself. Is not too loud so it's about five decibels over the room which is roughly 45 decibels in here and that was coming out at 49.50 let's test the keyboard decibel levels so again roughly around that 50 decibel level so that's pretty good so overall you've got a pretty decent keyboard you've got a nice mouse Makes a nice combo, really, especially for the price. Ideal for a starter or someone who's just getting into gaming uh, and they want something a little bit fancy. Even for people who have not got the best of eyesight, this keyboard would be ideal because it does light up and it makes it easier for them to see the keys. Um, but overall, for £17, £18 pounds or, or whatever it is, it's one hell of a good value. Because if you were to buy this keyboard separately, it's around £15. Mouse is normally a tenner, so you're looking normally about £25 or something like this at least. So to get the whole lot for £17, £18 is absolutely ideal. <laughs>